See, it's not just crazy fishermen out there, there's, there's crazy powered hang glider people as well. Send him on his way. Bite on that left hand rod, guys. Pretty sure I saw a bite then. Even though it's dubious amongst you, you can see that's quite a bit bigger than the last one. Well, it's working at the Tokyo Awesome Fishing Show down here on the beach on the south coast. Previously, in a previous episode, I was fishing over there, but when I was when I was winding, I felt some bumps, and I don't think I didn't lose any gear there, but it just bothered me, you know, because I figure it's the easiest access, so most people will just fish the easiest access, so there's more chance of losing gear there. If they're losing gear there, I don't want to get snagged up with them, so I've moved another hundred yards along, same sort of beach. I just show you. Just going to give it a throw out, see what I can do. There's a big channel comes out there. There's a sandbar over the back. Now, if I come again, I'm going to go about one, two, three and a half further down where that sandbar is. So the flood tide will push up over that sandbar. And I figure there might be fish coming around there and feeding in this bay. Who knows? I've just rocked up there. I'm not sure whether I'm going to have to move my gear back because there's a scow mark there. That the water comes up here and then shoots around there, just above the last high tide water line. Anyway, I am rigged up, just been back to the car because there's one major thing I forgot, the bait. I've driven 20 miles out of my way to get ragworm. Two places I've normally been trying ragworm had nothing. I thought, how far dare I go to get some ragworm? I just got everything riding on ragworm. But I'm going to put one rod out with a big chunk of mackerel on because it's cod time, you never know. Right, let's get baited up and thrown out. I'm aiming, it's a 8.10 p.m. high water. So that's pretty good, not a huge big tide. And I'm just trying to time, I've got four hours of darkness, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then maybe an hour after it goes down, I've always fancied the slight ebb, but you know, it's beautiful at the moment. There's a big storm coming in. Um, well, I've already got wet. You can tell here, look, I've got soaking wet putting this up and as soon as I put it up, you've got it, that's right, it stops. Anyway, let's get the baits out. I bought a little bit of wood for cutting up bait. I've got some mackerel in here, which I now probably am not going to use other than a big fillet I'm going to put on here. Look, look at my bait. Look, it's covered in casters from maggots because they've, that's what was in the freezer as well. Bait knife, somewhere in there. I've got to have something to drink. I don't drink any tea or real water really of much. I haven't drunk much since this morning, to be honest. Oh, other thing. Yes, the old bait thread. You need the bait thread. So what I'm going to do with this fillet, put a good whack on there. I'm going to take the back meat, if that makes sense. You can see this here. Just running the blade across the uh, bones, because I find that the the belly bit there, all for beginners, that makes good strip baits. But I want a pretty good chunk of meat out there in case there's anything giant swimming around which there never is but you never know like all uk beach fishermen i live in hope and i'll show you there now that you can see the old the pulley rig here's the hook there's the lead look watch the lead go up boom see it slide up and down on the pulley i'm going to fish that fill it on here it's a pedal rig i'm only going to lob it a little way out about a four ounce uh, grip lead there Gonna thread this up and not got really big hooks on this. So we can get this about midway. And then I'm gonna whip these two hooks together. 
just like this. Like, twist it around a couple of times, go through the meat. So generally, years ago, that would that would uh, catch like that. Now there's less fish around, and then what I'm doing here is I'm folding it around and around and around to make a tube out of it. But I'm leaving just here. And do you see that the point just just showing this is just to hold the meat of the mackerel together because it's frozen mackerel. It's not middle of winter. It's there's no fresh mackerel around here, not that I know of anyway. I'll go round the small hole, bait holding hook. And this will probably sit out there and catch nothing, but hey ho, it's worth a shout, I feel. And I don't think there's going to be much pull of tide out there. Actually, this is somebody else's rig I've got, I found down at Lillstock. So I'm using this one. I'm putting the bait clip in there like that. See there, guys? Uh, let's lean this one over here. Look, it's going to be a beautiful sunset. I'm going to try and get a sunset shot for you. Hopefully, I don't get pestered by people. So it's coming in. Should be flooding, should be starting by now. It's not too bad at all for the, uh, for the wind situation at the moment. <laughs> Who knows? I'll bury that in a minute. So there's a line of breakers here to break the waves up. Flood tide's going to be going from right to left, wind's going right to left. And I'm going to aim using these breakwaters as a sort of line just to lob it out there. Boom. See, I'm almost in a line there, so the current should pull to the left. Just leave that up. There's a gentleman watching me up there. Hopefully, if I stay down here, I'd be. The thing about beach fishing is it should be nice and peaceful and quiet. You're at one with the elements. I'm normally at one with a dog. Off a lead, eating my ragworm. Okay. I've left a little bit of slack in there, see I've pulled out a little bit of slack. Just back that drag off in case something bizarre happens. And we'll see what the next one is, I'll probably put a worm out there. So I haven't tried worms from these people before, but there's a good gob of worms there. It needs to be the sort of green gold you call these, these are ragworm. You can see them like that for the beginners, people abroad. This is the wonderful sort of titles we get in our papers now, quality journalism. So there's a lot of worms there, and the size of this puppy, oh my god, stretch that out, that's got to be what, a foot long? Somebody say, I know when you were fishing by the note on the paper, no you won't, because I keep those for my fire, so they could be two years old. This one I'm going to put, I'm going to probably break this worm in half, I'm basically aiming to catch anything, as happens in the UK, just pop it off and you'll notice maybe I've got little spinners on there, see those? Like little little spinner and a bead because occasionally, very occasionally they get a very very big price here. When I say big, I remember one that was called off the shore, five pounds. That's a big place. You get this sorted. Goodness me, there's hardly any small worms to put on here. So previously, now this one's got just sequins on, can you see? That's just got sequins on it, a bit of sparkle, of course, all of which means absolutely nothing once it gets dark. That didn't seem a particularly sharp hook. Now last time I fished here, different worms from a different area, I guess. They were very, very slippery, slimy worms. These, these seem much better. I wonder if these are going to catch me a fish. I thread it all up, including the tail. Pop it over the hook. Just hope that dog doesn't come back and see those worms, or lift his leg against my camera bag. So that's got like that's about a four ounce veined grip lead there. Look at that! What a setting, guys. Do you know? Don't catch anything. You come down. It's worth it with the sea out on the beach. 
anybody who follows us know I, I do now just to have interest you can see already that line looks like it wants to pull right so I'm going to aim for that sort of tanker over there so I'm not going to hit it no gonna get booty oh no that was close and out 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 bosh so trying for small fish but I've got to throw a big fillet out there just in case one day one day it will be like old school days when you come down I used to catch cod off the shore and bass and oh, I don't even talk about it now it's sad we got down to catching anything we can and they're fished as a pair so I'm going to cut that just down the middle like that and use that as a sort of tipping bait so I'm going to put this on here up this baiting needle threading it just I can feel the, the needle go sort of along the skin if that makes sense Mr Ragworm's going to get spiked pretty much the same I'm sure he doesn't appreciate it that much but he's going to a good cause occasionally it pops out so I've got I've got it like that right now I'm just going to snap that half worm off and just keep it there with a stone over it so it doesn't blow away a bit of bait thread I just bind that worm to the bit of meat just combo baits can be very 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 good very good now I don't know why you'd have to think what well, are they coming for the worm or are they coming for the mackerel and the truth is to be told I don't know it's just that fishermen know that sometimes a combo bait will work on this I've also got some little plastic beads again black and red there you see and that represents the pea mussel so I just got a small hook small hook guys then I'll go in in and out under the elastic there pop it through the skin Put it right through and then I'll go through again. I don't know if you're seeing this or not. Just sort of almost under the elastic to be honest like that. I'll pull it all down so the hooks sit in pride and just proud and then just whip the hook so it sits. Snap it off, don't lose that. It's a good idea to put it like that. Then I just slide this off and there's my bait. That little piece of tag end might come off, but who knows? got two chances or you can just do it if I just thread in the worm straight on the hook like this see that one's gone slimy on me difficult to uh, get up the up the shank it's a little bit too rough for sole sometimes you get sole I know people say there are summer fish but I have known the odd ones come out in the winter now that one I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, put on the baiting needle. I'll put the piece of meat there just so you don't have to have a baiting needle. I'll just whip this piece of meat to the back end of the hook. You can see that. It's easier to do it in a daylight like this, like even if the fishing's fairly nondescript. You don't know, you don't know, do you? Every time you come on a beach, there's that sort of bit of hope in there. It's not like going carp fishing where you know all the lake are in the all the carp in the lake, Susan, Arthur, Bill, they're all there, they're all waiting for you. I'll do it all carp fishing, doesn't bother me really. But there's something about the sea, it's the unknown. There we go. Just make sure the hook point, I'll hold it against there. Can you see it? Just like that. It's just sticking proud. So let's get this one out there. and hit and hope. Not clipping these down boys. This one, got the shock leader there. Wow, that, that's pulled quite a bit left. Quite a bit left, so I'm gonna whiz this one out. Where's that, where's that tower I wanna to aim for? So he's definitely pulling left. Now I've gotta watch this a flooding tide so I don't need a booty. She goes. 
So on this one, oh by the way that's a luminous uh, lead weight there, which obviously in the daylight possibly doesn't work very well. Small hooks, sequins, everything. As if there could be whiting out there, they're not averse to strips of bait. That one I don't think needs whipping, it's got a little rubber stop there, you slide down to stop usually worms going up the hook. So what you do is, well you hook yourself in the leg obviously. I'll hold it up here, see this little rubber stop thing, you slide that up, then you thread the worm all the way up the hook, over the eye, up the trace, up the line, because generally any little tags like that and if you're casting hard will just snap off anyway. So you've got all the meat on the hook, but then sometimes if you do cast hard, the worm shoots away all the way up here, off the end of the hook, and it's not anywhere near the hook. So they fit these little sequins, you can see there, just there, a sequin and a rubber stop to stop the worm sliding up. So it should always pretty well stay like that. The sun's gonna pop in a second. I hope to get a sunset shot. Maybe the cloud won't let me. I'm gonna aim for old chime out over there and give this one a bit of a wuzz because it's my, uh, Wait for the waves, my heavier rod might snap off. That's well on the way. Kaboom. Now, it'll be interesting to see with these small hooks. I haven't used these for most of the year. I've been on pulley rigs and big baits in the hope of a bigger fish. Had the odd decent fish, you know, congress, small congress, thornback rays, that type of thing. But you do run the risk of a blank with a big bait. So I've got right a mishmash here. I'll use a, as many different rigs and types of baits and hook sizes so that you guys can see maybe which one's going to catch. Also, two of the rods I've got, I have got the tape on the top. Uh, should show up at night with the reflective jacket that I stripped down. It's something interesting guys, I'm not the only stupid one out. There's a guy in one of those kite hangy thingies. Like a wind kite, surfy, whatever it is. He's gonna come right over the top of me. Quite interesting to see. See, it's not just crazy fishermen out here. There's, there's crazy powered hang glider people as well. We're all loving the outdoors. He's coming back. He's coming back for another strafing run, guys. Watch him. I won't laugh when he can't see the blade and it goes through his propeller. Here he comes. He's going to come so close. I reckon I could throw some ragworm and catch him. and it flashes up he's running out of petrol. <laughs> now that's what I call spatial awareness and it's some major social distancing. I thought I was social distancing down here on my own in the beach about two miles nobody else here and he's got even more space up in the sky. As yet guys no bites. Actually I could smell the, is it ethanol? What do they burn that stuff on? 
Wow, that takes me back when we used to have model aeroplanes. I could smell it on the wind. Woo! <laughs> I feel really happy, man. Oh, bring me some more of that big E, man. Get me some ethanol. <laughs> gone four o'clock and in the winter, I mean it's getting dark, the sun went, I want to say 15 minutes ago. And very often you can get a really nice afterglow sunset where it's down below the horizon and it reflects in the clouds. Places like Mauritius and tropical countries, they get some fantastic cloud sunsets after the sunset's been. I'll spin this camera around and show you what it looks like over there off the Isle of Wight now in the clouds. <laughs> And that's just the sun, the last of the sun's light going up in the, uh, in the clouds and lighting them up. Again, if I was sat at home watching TV, I'm not going to see the natural stuff like this. Oh, I forgot to bring the old chair. I'm sitting on the bait, bait container. Just been down to check the rods. Not a tremble. I'll tell you what I find strange. Three days ago, was it Friday tonight, two things, two things. <laughs> two, two, three days ago, I was out with Wayne, we were literally off that headland there. I think they called it cold, right? Out that way, we were just fishing out there. Fishing was good at one stage of the tide, it went dead all day, just dogfish, and good at the end. In other words, the first and the last of the flow. And we caught, I mean gargantuan whiting, like three pounders. No, I mean, I guess they're here, seriously. Three pounders. What I don't understand is, that's just out there. Fish come in to shallower water during the night. Why do we not get those lovely big whiting off the shore? I don't think I've ever, well I know, I don't think I've ever caught a three pound whiting off the shore. I know I haven't. And even something like a two pound whiting off the shore. I mean, that's a big fish here somewhere. That's a big fish. Why do they not come in? I don't understand that. And another thing, while well, I'm waiting for bites, I'm going to put my dog ear flaps up so I can hear myself talk, hear myself think. It's theory time. My theory is, if there's fish out there, and you've got to go on about a mile out to get fish, half a mile generally in a boat, as soon as you get out on a boat, you've got way more chance of catching fish. So you'd think at night, a lot more fish, loads and loads of fish will come in close, but they don't seem to. I wonder, on the south coast near, let's say, I've got to call them polluted areas, areas of high human habitation, therefore pollutants going in the water, who knows, sewage, whatever. Has that killed off all the ecology of the seabed for, I'm going to say, half a mile to a mile, so there's not much worth coming in for if you were a fish? I don't know, it's just a theory, because when I was younger, we caught loads and loads of fish off this beach, my grandparents had a house up the road. We used to spend all my summer holidays down here, so I know a bit about Hayley Island fishing. I can remember they used to catch conger. One match I had 17 pound conger, not me, in the match off there. <coughs> loads of bigger bass, they used to get loads of bigger bass. What else did they used to catch? Well, I would say slightly bigger whiting, we did get slightly bigger whiting, but certainly, certainly more bass. They seemed to 
go on down. Then you get little baby bass like this, you know, get those round in the estuaries. But you would you would fish, I'm gonna talk about the 19, not the 1860s, no, no, the 1960s, I would say onwards, we would have a pressure lamp. I don't think they invented battery torches. They certainly hadn't got head torches. And there would be chili lamps lined on a Friday night. Look, there's nobody here tonight, there's nobody. I know the tide's not up till eight and it's only four. But there would be a line of these guys every weekend, especially Friday and Saturday night, with chili lights dotted down the beach. You would count anything from 40 to 50 anglers out just fishing in the evening, especially with a night flood tide like this. There's nobody here now, I don't understand it. There's just less and less anglers fishing, so why is it harder and harder to catch a fish? When it gets dark and the tide comes up, I feel I'm gonna get some nibbles, especially with these worms. If not, I'd be pig sick, because I've paid about 12 pounds for these worms. I think for that I should know their provenance and their personal names. Come on, boys. At least it's not cold, it's not cold. My fingers haven't dropped off yet. Well, this camera's really good in low light, so I'm gonna, although it's, it's dark here, if I turn that light off, the low lux of the camera will make it seem it's almost daylight, but trust me, it's not, it's getting dark, well, it is dark. I'm gonna take you down and see those rod tops that I whipped that flash material off of that yellow high-vis jacket, and we'll just see if it works on the other two rods as well, and I know it will. Touch guys. They can go back out again. It's not even crab to chew. Check the uh, worms. I know there's no bite. I know there's no fish there because I see the bite. I just want to check that there's at least some bait on the hook. It's got light now. Or well, maybe not. Might be weed. No. Just want to check the worms. Pretty well. Pretty well okay, do you know what I mean? Ah. Now that could be crabs, I don't think that was a fish. So get that mackerel out and then I'll uh, freshen these baits up with some more worms. Send him on his way. I'm never exuding confidence to be honest with a uh, a two hook panel rig when it's clipped down. So occasionally the bait holding hook, the retaining one, will just tangle around the main rig body. And you know, it might disengage with just wraps. So I'd, I'd sooner fish a clip down rig with a single hook, if that makes sense. But listen, I know loads of guys use double hook rigs fine. It's just me in my mind, because I don't do this all the time. It bothers me that it might not have disengaged. Bite on that left hand rod, guys. Pretty sure I saw a bite then. 
getting colder. Pretty sure it's a bite on that left-hander. You can see the shimmer on the uh, tape there that I put there. Well, there we go, boys. <laughs> Switch this off for you. First fish of the trip on the first cast makes a change. And look, it's on the mackerel and uh, ragworm wrap. Small whiting. It's something to catch, and it? it's a bit of fun, something to catch. And fingers crossed, there's some more out there. Now that's a nice early fish. Let's get it back. When you're fishing on the beaches and you can't get these spikes to go in the back, just dig around and see if you can uh, find a big lump of concrete or rock or something like that, so that if you do get a rod wrenching pull up at this end, at least it doesn't tip the rest over and go in the water. I have had to come off the rest with a conger on, so it's on one of our films, it will happen. happen. Or you can see what I've done here is drag a load of shingle and sand down, stamp it down and then put a decent sized boulder on it, same thing. Well I didn't even see that whiting bite so at least they're out there. It's amazing, the better bite registration you get on grade as opposed to mono. So this one This one's very fine, that's great, no stretch. I tweak it like this, I, I just do this, watch. And at the other end. You can see immediate bites. Starting to back the rods up, bringing them back, back, back. I'm just wondering where that high tide surges around if I'm actually going to get swamped here. And I want to cook up something. You've heard of surf and turf. Well, I've got the turf, but I can't really say I've got the surf one yet. I've just had that one whitey. But I have got on the uh, small hooks, I think it's on the same rod. Tiny little tap, just like this, just a little tiny tap, very, very small. I don't think they're crabs, because a lot of times you see really, really small little tugs like this, and the general is crab stewing off. If it, if it just gets a little bit sharper, then that should be a fish, a whiting, a rockling, anything like that. Small pal, bigger pal team. Bigger pal would probably eat those worms, in fairness. And I'm going to have a cook up up here somewhere, so I just set up. Made a little ring of stones, like traditional bushcraft way, might be proud of me. I found a really good slab, because what I'm going to cook, folks, is I'm not going to die of starvation. It's one of the leading supermarkets' finest 30 day mature, mature rump steak. Oh, and I forgot the bread roll. So it's going to be steak, steak, and steak if I can cook it and if I can get the embers hot enough and if the waves don't swamp the fire. At the moment, no more nibbles. I'm just going to have a wheel in. Double check the baits. Again, ragworm and uh, strip of mackerel combo. Small whiting. I'm going to get him back. I just cast out the other one with uh, just ragworm on it, so I'm going to get this guy back. Just another small whiting. Again, didn't see the bite. But I think I'd better change those from ragworm and just do a combo baits. That's two on combo baits. It could indeed be the very same white thing, except even though it's dubious amongst you, you can see that's quite a bit bigger than the last one. And that's on straight worm. 
So, my theory of I've got to change them all and put, come off, I've got to put um, a combo bait on, not necessarily. Well, steady, steady, but sure. The uh, downside is, there's a guy running up and down out there, a couple hundred yards offshore, I guess he's just trawling, who knows, might be illegal. He's so, he's so close, I can almost see the cigarette draw as he's going up and down, so maybe I won't get many more fish, who knows. Right, let's chuck another bait out in his direction. Well, not only might I uh, actually be able to get a cook up with that steak, I've got my own power source of light. Ancient, but still working. This one's a pressure lantern. An old anchor pressure lamp, about 30, 35 years old. The present time is working, so I'm not going to disturb it from there if I can help it. Plenty of light, plenty of light from that one. Just watch these guys because sometimes you can get what we call a slack liner. That might be even a slack liner. And that could be a bigger fish altogether. I doubt it, but you never know. Just keep an eye. And the tip is pulled over by this in the current or the wind and it suddenly springs back. It's because the fish has picked up the grip leg and broken it out. Well, I think it's in the time to get my steak tenderized. And I even have a cookery slab. Guys, there's the steak and there's the tenderizer. <laughs> Just bring back some memories, this old light. The saying goes, for us oldies, it don't get any better than this. As the fire goes out. That looks like a Texas steak now, spread it so thinly. Hey guys, cooking on embers like this, this will get hot really quickly. Mike Sterling illustrated that on his Bushcraft channel. Now, there he goes, the steak. Time scale what? Three minutes each side? It's almost time to wind another fish in.
of how many other people are on the beach cooking rump steak and catching fish at the same time using a 35 or 40 year old anchor pressure lamp. Not many. Oh, 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 please! Oh no! The frying pan's even staying in one place. Check that out. Oh, oh, oh. That's going to be beautiful. Now you'll be able to catch up. I've got a tin of soup as well. I'm pleased to get this in a pub. Steam. didn't exactly overdo the mustard. And I fear for the steak aficionados a little bit of ketchup on the side. Happy day. Not only am I having rump steak on the beach, I'm catching more whiting. I'm so pleased here, guys. Look, that's old school, that is. Whiting and a pressure lamp. I don't imagine anybody is even doing that. Let us know if you still go out and you still like using, if you even got one, the old pressure lamp. I don't bet anybody's got the old tilly lamps, but this one's an anchor. It's got 350 candle power, I think this one is. And this is just barely going at the moment, it's for about 150 at the moment. Otherwise I'd light the whole beach up if I wound it right up, but it needs a new needle. Oh, boys, I knew this was old school, old school special. Just like the good old days. What? And fish, but and whitey people. Doesn't get any better than that. That is a pretty big dab actually. Could have sorted that one. That's a good one. What a good job for him, for both these, that I've actually had that steak. Well, we're on the bike now, tight on the turn. Got the fire going again, in case I want to put that soup on, it gets cold. Let's get these guys back. Guys, it's all kicking off. Three hooks, right, three hooks. Two fish on the go, big time. I don't really think at this stage it matters whether I've got worm, worm, squid, whatever. There you go. Rag, I don't think it matters. This one here is not a bad one actually. That one there. Wow, quite a good little session to be honest. Don't mind me really getting bites from these kiddies all the time. a little bit quiet now. I think it's top of the tide's just turned about 15 minutes down. All the mayhem of whiting, I didn't film them all, was at the top of the tide, either the side. In fact, I've got steak time. So I'm gonna let this, I've got the fire going again, as you can see in the background. I've got that going, I'm gonna have some soup later on, because look, the left is coming out, it's pretty cold. It's a big wave. Pretty sure that it, uh, it's about 15 minutes to go down. When it goes down, it makes a sort of roaring, sucking noise as it turns over on the shingle. 
normally it tells you that is the tide sucking out. And I've always liked, I've always liked that because I feel that any food up the top you get sucked back and roll back down. So I always like to hang on for at least an hour after high water. And I will tonight because it's a beautiful evening. It's no, it's no rain and they say there's a storm coming in, but it'll be coming in. It'll be long tucked up in bed, I hope. So it'll be nice to finish a couple more fish, like a different species, maybe a small scaldy bass or something, but listen, what can I say? Pretty idyllic. Wow people, the I've had so many fish and such a good time. I've used up the memory card on the other camera. The fire's burning down, so I'm using the light off of this on the dead camera as it were. And I'm gonna have my soup now. The tide's on the turn. I've still had a few bites, but I'm just gonna see if they hang themselves. I am so the aficionados of soup know this is minestrone soup and it's got no artificial colours or preservatives. Which is nice to know. As with anything, guys, it sounds like basic. You just take anything like this home. You brought it in a bag, and I've been washing these out because mice coming up at some stage, and we'll have to have some air gun practice, some target practice shooting these. So I'm trying to wash them all out at home and save them. And of course, he will beat me. He's got a PCP, and I've got an old spring action. And then you never know with old school, do you? Why am I talking to that camera? Stupid boy, Graham. Let's check the fire. Now that's burnt down. I'm hoping you'll see with this camera. I've got no idea doing it like this. And there should be enough light, but you can see how it's burnt down to embers. If that'll balance there without tipping over. Now it won't take long, I assure you, before it heats up. I keep a spare bit here look, for moving bits of wood around. It's probably still a little bit smoky, but it is what it is. I can assure you one thing. It's hot. Gives me time to run down. I've got to, I've got to go everywhere with this with this big light now. I definitely, definitely up there had a bite on that right hand rod. Oh! Bite on the left hand rod. Ah! So there are still fish out there guys. They haven't that's me look at the left hand rod, that's not me. Look, that's a bite. That's a bite on the left hand rod, look, bite on the right hand rod. I'm going to wheel this one in. This one had the bite earlier. It's not on there. I can feel he's not on there. Will he come back? Let's try this one. I don't know if you're going to see enough with this, this camera. No, he's not on there. They might be real, real small fish. So you just, just let them sit out there. With this small fish, I tend to, rather than crank it over like cod or bass with a lot of pressure in there, I tend to pull a yard off so it's just a little bit loose. And then watch them just like this, just a bit tight. Just see if they'll come back. I'll bring you down here and show you the waves, in case anybody's not seen them before. For those who never get to the seaside, this is the seaside. For those who never have a shower, this is the water. I don't supply the soap though. Towels are optional. There's something about night fishing on your own, on a beach. I mean, listen, a rock mark would be better. Casting into deep water with a big boat for big rays and congress and stuff. This is the big swell that uh, they were telling me about coming in. It seems there's been a few other guys and they've uh, They've cleared off and gone. Well, hopefully you can see those rod tops there where I've put the new reflective tape on them. They stand out really well. Let's go and check this suit. Oh, I see something steaming. Whoopsie. Lamp's still going. Yeah, that's going to be working. I've got the old billy can because it keeps it really hot. If I do get a fish, leave it in here. Yeah, that's going well always cook over embers. The thing is, when you're out in the open like this, the fire burns down relatively, relatively quickly. The embers will stay warm. The smoke still stays the same. The handle still melts the same. But for me, you can also heap up 
any coals around the pan. Again, Mike on TA Outdoors, my good son, has shown me how to heat up things. When the embers are getting low, you put all these embers, you wouldn't want to pick them up with your fingers, you just put them all around the edge of the saucepan as well. You tend to think the red glowing bits are the hottest, but very often I think it's the white bits are the hottest. All right. I'm looking forward to that minestrone soup and rump steak. Oh, oh, oh. The old light's uh, failing a bit. Might want a bit of a pump up. But what happens is there's a little needle, you can't see it up under there. I can't move that glass too much because it is very hot. There's a needle up in there and it's got bent. And if I bend it too much, it's a little bit lighter then, just a little bit. This will roar, but I, you know, I'm just happy with the way it's working at the moment. Guys. As you can see, it does a handsome job of lighting the beach up. And you can cook pies. I've got a pie I might be putting on there later on if this lasts long enough. If I stay late enough. And the, uh, the wind's just picking up now. Because other guys, is one other guy down. There might be two other guys way down uh, at the beach. And uh, the other couple of other guys packed up. I guess they know what the weather forecast is going to do. Keep looking at that one, thinking the camera's there, but of course he's here. Anyway, I'd like to pick up another couple of fish on the nice hot soup. If you're worried about embers not being hot enough, guys, just check that soup. That is now a rolling boil, what's called a rolling boil. So basically, as far as cooking goes, it's probably ruined. I do love that lamp. The sea anchor, made in China. 35, 30, 35, at least 35 years old. The original one. Proper job. And look at this fire. My goodness me. Have I made a good job? Michael would be proud of me with that. Totally awesome beach fire. Steel plate underneath. Water to put it out. Brilliant. I I could pour the soup on it. Cheers guys, I'm going to get on with this. Out, here comes another fish guys. There we go. Another whiting. You guys might see it in this light, I don't know. That is a small one in fairness. On the worms, I don't think I'm going to put any more combo baits on. I've got about an hour, so I'll chuck him back. Woo! Coming a long, coming a long way that time. I'll get these worms back out. That one I thought, just untangle it there, you know, with a mackerel strip and rag would be good, but they strip him rag straight off. So I guess that's what we've got to use. Up there in the sky, you guys won't see it, there's a line of clouds. And I've got a feeling that is the weather front that they forecast. Might be coming in. I'll just see the last of these worms. I've got quite a few worms, actually. I might as well go loaded for bear now. Makes a change to get some decent worms. I'm falling to pieces. Now, I don't know whether these are farmed ones or locally dug. Well, sorry, they're not too local for me. I had to drive 20 mile round trip to uh, even get bait. The local shops never had any. And the hooks I'm using are quite small. Would it be a 1 0? I don't know. Hook size, I'm terrible. Hook sizes. Cod hook, whiting hook, that sort of thing is me. I'm going to take that off. There's a little something I've been doing. Now I'm no save the planet green, as you know, but there's elastic elastic bait thread on that. I started throwing it in there, keeping it because I can dump it at home. I'm not really wild about dumping it at sea, you know, on the beach. Very easy just to strip it off, isn't it? Just you know, just tear it off and throw it away, get another bait out. We all do it, but there could come a time when I actually do want to use those as a last minute bait. Do you see what I mean? Obviously I am going to throw them away, but should I run out of bait? I won't run out of bait tonight, we've got enough worms here now. If I did run out of bait, 
I've still got those I can make do with. That way I take them home as well. It's just, look, I'm not preaching to anybody, I'm just telling you the time of the elastic bait thread is limited. And there we go. All ready to send out there. One more fish would be nice. But there always is one more fish. I've had a great time. Really enjoyed this for a change. Very hard work, at it all the time, trying to get you guys the pictures and try and create sort of the atmosphere that we had years ago. It's just the way it was years ago. Great, great fun, you know. We had an umbrella instead of this bivvy sort of machine here. They're, they're good though, they are good, I have to say. It's windy, at my age, they're good. So, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I've had more whiting, it's just like the number 49 bus. You catch one, and there's another one coming along afterwards, and I'm not grateful for it. So who knows, I'm just toughing it out for the last hour and then I'm off home. I think I'm about, this is one other guy about a mile, half a mile down the beach. I can see his light moving around. Um, I guess he's getting the whiting as well. So fingers crossed, I have a good trip next time as I have on this one. We'll see you in the next episode. Hit that TA Fishing and TA Outdoor subscriptions. Me, I could stay all night if I had enough bait, to be honest. Tide stayed up quite well, just running out of bait. I don't fancy just the mackerel on its own, they definitely want those ragworm. We'll see you guys next time. Packing up. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Whatever else. Bass, little baby bass I've got as well, look. And wait, on the other end of the line, I can't even get it in it. So it's whiting and bass. I mean, talk about a last cast. <laughs>